Story 1 Umi had always loved animals, especially the big cats. Growing up in South Africa, she spent her weekends volunteering at a local wildlife reserve, learning the ins and outs of animal care. When she turned 18, she landed her first job as a zookeeper at a big cat sanctuary in the heart of the African bush. Umi loved her job, and the animals seemed to love her back. One particular lion, named Tao, had always been Umi's favorite. Tao was a magnificent specimen, with a thick mane of golden fur and piercing green eyes. Umi had spent countless hours bonding with the lion, hand-feeding, and even taking him for walks around the sanctuary. Umi had a special connection with Tao that she had never experienced with any other animal. Umi and Tao's bond started years ago, when Tao was born with his three other siblings. His mother, a lioness named Elna, died shortly after giving birth due to a complication. After Elna's death, the other cubs also passed away, except Tao, which the sanctuary thought made him special. Tao was eye candy for the visitors and also the handlers. He had grown into a beautiful and majestic lion at four. Unlike other lions in the wild, Tao had been trained to follow and do some commands given by Umi whenever he's going to be fed or going through a health checkup conducted by the sanctuary's management. One day, Umi did her usual rounds, checking on the animals and ensuring they had enough food and water. As she approached Tao's enclosure, the lion let out a fierce roar, which was unusual for him. Umi tried to calm Tao down by talking to him softly, but the lion seemed agitated and restless. As Umi reached into the enclosure to hand feed Tao, the lion suddenly lunged forward, clamping his jaws around Umi's arm. Umi was surprised and screamed in pain as Tao began to drag her into the enclosure. Umi could feel the lion's powerful jaws crushing her bones as she struggled to break free. Umi remembered her training in a split second and knew she had to act fast to survive. She remembered reading that lions are more likely to release their prey if they are hit in the nose, so she used all her strength to punch Tao in the face with her free hand. The blow stunned Tao for a moment, and Umi was able to pull her arm free from the lion's grasp. But Tao wasn't done yet. He continued to attack Umi, biting and clawing her with all his might. Umi tried to fight back, but she was quickly overpowered by the lion's strength and ferocity. Umi screamed as the lion began to maul her brutally, biting and clawing her everywhere, from her head down to her torso. She tried to break free again from Tao, but her strength is obviously no match for the predator. Tao continued to growl and attack Umi until she was heavily bloodied and wounded. Just when Umi thought all was lost, she heard a tranquilizer dart piercing the air. The sanctuary's emergency response team had been alerted to the attack and had arrived just in time to save Umi's life. The tranquilizer quickly took effect and Tao fell into a deep sleep. Umi was rushed to the hospital where she underwent surgery to repair the damage from the lion's attack. Miraculously, Umi survived the ordeal, but she was left with physical and emotional scars. After the attack, Tao was transferred to another enclosure to examine his behavior and decide whether to keep or give him another handler. Meanwhile, Umi was offered a different role at the sanctuary, but refused to give up her job as a zookeeper. Instead, she threw herself into her work, determined to show she could overcome her fear and continue caring for the animals she loved so much. Despite the trauma she had experienced, Umi never lost her love for animals. She continued to work at the sanctuary until the management decided Tao to be kept and guarded and even formed a special bond with the lion who had nearly taken her life. Umi knew the attack had been a tragic accident and she refused to hold a grudge against the animal she had grown to love. Years later, Umi would look back on that fateful day and realize how lucky she had been to survive. She knew she had been given a second chance at life and was determined to make the most of it. The scars on her body would always remind her of the attack, but they would also remind her of her strength and resilience in the face of danger. Umi knew she was lucky to be alive, 
and told herself never to take her life for granted and always be alert to her surroundings, even if she trusted Tao or had a bond with him. Story 2 Jamal and Nyla had just tied the knot in a beautiful ceremony in South Africa. They were excited to begin their honeymoon at a luxurious hotel on the outskirts of the Kruger National Park. They had always wanted to experience the wilds of Africa, but they never expected to come face to face with one of its fiercest predators. On the second day of their honeymoon, Jamal and Nyla were lounging in the hotel lobby enjoying the sunshine and the sounds of the African bush. They were discussing their plans for the day when they heard a loud roar. They looked up to see a massive male lion charging toward them. At first, Jamal and Nyla froze in shock. They couldn't believe what they were seeing. The lion was only a few meters away, and they knew they had to act fast if they wanted to survive. Jamal grabbed Nyla's hand and pulled her towards him trying to shield her from the lion's attack. The lion leaped towards them, claws bared and teeth gleaming in the sunlight. Jamal instinctively tried to fend it off with his bare hands, but the lion was too powerful. It knocked Jamal down, and as he hit the ground, the lion pounced on him, digging its claws into his back. Nyla screamed as she watched her new husband being mauled by the lion. She knew she had to do something to help him, she saw a large vase nearby and grabbed it, throwing it at the lion's head. It distracted the lion momentarily, allowing Jamal to crawl away from its reach. The lion turned its attention toward Nyla, its eyes fixed on her. She could feel her heart pounding as the lion charged toward her. She grabbed a chair and held it in front of her as a shield. With a single swipe, the lion knocked the chair out of her hand and Nyla stumbled backward falling to the ground. The lion was on top of her instantly, its massive paws pinning her to the ground. She could feel its hot breath on her face as it growled at her. She knew she had to fight for her life. She remembered a survival tactic she had learned before and decided to punch the lion in the nose, hoping that it would cause it to release her. She mustered all her strength and punched the lion as hard as possible. The lion roared in pain, but it didn't release her. She tried punching it again, but the lion was too strong. It dug its claws deeper into her flesh, and she could feel blood oozing out of her wounds. When she thought it was all over, she heard a loud gunshot. The lion fell to the ground, dead. A group of game rangers had arrived on the scene and shot the lion just in time to save Jamal and Nyla. Jamal and Nyla were rushed to the hospital, receiving urgent medical attention. They both suffered severe injuries from the lion's attack, but were alive. They spent the next few weeks recovering from their injuries, both physically and emotionally. The incident shook them, and they agreed to never forget what happened. They also agreed that they would continue to explore and experience the wonders of Africa but they would always do so with caution and respect for the wild animals that call it home. In the end, Jamal and Nyla's honeymoon was a harrowing experience they would never forget. They were lucky to survive the lion attack, but it was a reminder that life is precious and can be taken away instantly. They were grateful to be alive and knew they would never take anything for granted again. Story 3 Margaret had been drawn to animals since she was a little girl, growing up on her family's farm in the countryside. From a young age, she knew she wanted to become a veterinarian and help care for needy animals. So she worked hard and eventually earned her degree in veterinary medicine. After completing her studies, Margaret started her own veterinary practice in a small town on the outskirts of a game reserve. She had always been fascinated by wild animals, and living so close to the reserve allowed her to encounter them regularly. Margaret loved nothing more than taking care of these majestic creatures and helping them heal from any injuries or they might have. One day, Margaret received a call from the game reserve about a lion named Cubby who needed a checkup. Cubby was a magnificent male lion known to be a bit of a troublemaker 
often getting into scuffles with other lions in the reserve. Despite his reputation, Margaret was excited to have the opportunity to work with such a powerful and beautiful animal. When Margaret arrived at the reserve, she was instructed to put on protective gear first before one of the park rangers escorted her to Cubby's enclosure. Cubby was lying in the shade of a large tree, his mouth covered with a protective muzzle and his golden mane blowing in the wind. Margaret approached him slowly, taking care not to startle him. She introduced herself and began the checkup, examining his eyes, nose, and coat. At first, everything seemed to be going well. Cubby was calm and cooperative, allowing Margaret to perform her examination without issues. Margaret was obviously nervous since she was doing a checkup on a huge predatory animal, but she was convinced that nothing bad would happen since there was a park ranger beside her. However, as Margaret checked his hindquarters, Cubby suddenly turned and lunged at her with incredible speed and force. Margaret didn't have time to react. Before she knew it, she was on the ground with the full weight of the lion on top of her. She could feel his sharp claws digging into her skin and his hot breath on her face. Margaret knew that this was it. She was going to die. The park ranger tried to shoot a trank dart to stop the lion, but it missed. The lion roared and continued attacking Margaret by biting and clawing her whole body from her head down to her stomach. She tried her best to resist the lion's attacks, but Cubby was indeed strong and she was no match for his kind of strength. Margaret was already bloodied and wounded and could feel her body getting worn out. But somehow, through sheer willpower and determination, Margaret found the strength to fight back. She kicked and thrashed, trying to dislodge the lion from on top of her. With every movement, she could feel the lion's grip on her loosen slightly. The park ranger called for backup and began to help Margaret in beating up the lion. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, Margaret could break free from the lion's grasp. She scrambled to her feet with the help of the park ranger as the two of them ran toward the safety of the park ranger's truck, her heart pounding in her chest. Once safely inside the truck, Margaret took a deep breath and assessed her injuries. She suddenly passed out which made the park ranger start his truck and take her to the nearest hospital. There, Margaret suffered from wounds and lacerations on her head, neck, and torso, which needed intense medication to recover from. After a few months, Margaret recovered and knew she had to regain her focus to go to work again. Over the next few weeks, Margaret worked tirelessly to overcome her fear of working with wild animals again. She knew that if she didn't face her fears head on, she would never be able to continue her life's work. Eventually, Margaret could return to the game reserve and continue her work as a veterinarian. She learned from the experience with Cubby, realizing that even the most docile and cooperative animals can be unpredictable and dangerous. Despite the trauma of the attack, Margaret never lost her love and respect for wild animals. She continued to care for them with the same dedication and passion as before, always mindful of the risks involved. Years later, Margaret became known as one of the region's most respected and experienced animal doctors. Her bravery and determination in the face of danger had earned her the admiration of her colleagues and the respect of the animals she cared for. Although she had been brutally attacked by a lion named Cubby, Margaret had emerged from the experience stronger and more determined than ever before. Story 4 Xu Chang was a majestic lion who lived in a zoo in China. He was one of the most popular attractions in the zoo, drawing crowds of visitors every day. He was a magnificent beast with a golden mane that shimmered in the sunlight and piercing green eyes that seemed to look right through you. Xu Chang was well cared for by his handlers, who fed him a balanced diet and kept his enclosure clean and spacious. He was content living in the zoo, lounging in the sun and playing with his toys. One day, however, the tranquility of Xu Chang's world was shattered when a drunken visitor jumped into his enclosure. The man stumbled around the enclosure, shouting and taunting the lion, unaware of his danger. 
Chu Chang was startled by the man's sudden appearance, but he soon realized that the man was not to be trifled with. The lion growled and bared his teeth, warning the man to stay away, but the man was too drunk to heed the warning and continued approaching the lion. Suddenly, the man lunged at Xu Chang, grabbing the lion's mane and trying to climb onto his back. Xu Chang roared in anger and pain, swatting at the man with his powerful paws. The man was no match for the lion's strength and speed, and soon was bleeding profusely from his wounds. The crowd of visitors who had been watching in horror quickly dispersed, running for cover as Xu Chang continued to maul the man. But one person refused to abandon the injured man to his fate. Yu Fei, Xu Chang's handler. Yu Fei had worked with Xu Chang for years and knew the lion's behavior better than anyone else. He realized the lion was not attacking out of malice, but out of fear and self-defense. Yu Fei quickly grabbed a tranquilizer gun and raced to Xu Chang's enclosure. As soon as Yu Fei entered the enclosure, he saw the man lying motionless, with Xu Chang standing over him. The lion was clearly agitated, pacing back and forth and growling at Yu Fei. But Yu Fei knew he had to act quickly to save the man and the lion. Yu Fei carefully approached Xu Chang, speaking to him soothingly and keeping his distance. The lion slowly calmed down, and Yu Fei could shoot him with a tranquilizer dart. As Xu Chang drifted to sleep, Yu Fei quickly grabbed the man and carried him out of the enclosure. The man was rushed to the hospital, receiving treatment for his injuries. He eventually recovered, but he was left with scars that would remind him of his foolishness for the rest of his life. As for Xu Chang, he was not punished for his behavior. The zoo recognized that he had only acted out of self-defense, and they made sure to take extra precautions to prevent such incidents from happening in the future. Yu Fei was hailed as a hero for his quick thinking and bravery in facing danger. He saved both the man and the lion, and demonstrated the importance of understanding and respecting the behavior of wild animals. Ultimately, the incident served as a wake-up call for the zoo and its visitors. It reminded everyone that wild animals are not toys or pets and deserve to be treated with caution and respect. And as for Xu Chang, it was a reminder that even a gentle and caring hand can tame even the most powerful and fearsome creatures. Story 5 Ares was an adventure-loving tourist from Canada. He had always been fascinated by the wildlife of Africa. When he heard about a walk with the lions experience at a safari park in Senegal, he couldn't resist the opportunity. Ares had done a lot of research before coming, and he knew that the lions at the park were raised in captivity and were relatively safe to walk with. On the day of the experience, Ares arrived early in the morning at the park he was greeted by his guide Musa, a friendly and knowledgeable local who had been working at the park for many years. Musa explained the safety precautions and the rules of the experience to Ares, which included walking in a single file, not making loud noises, and not getting too close to the lions. Excitement filled Ares as he put on his gear and joined the group. They walked towards a large enclosure where four lions were waiting. Ares could see the massive felines pacing and playing with each other. The group approached the enclosure, and Musa warned them to stay behind the fence. He opened the gate and signaled the group to follow him. Ares was thrilled as he stepped into the enclosure, watching the lions from close range. The group walked slowly, staying close to Musa. The lions didn't seem to mind their presence and continued to play and lounge around. Suddenly, one of the lions, a massive male, started growling and charging toward Ares. Panic set in as Ares froze, unable to move. The lion was getting closer and closer, and Ares could feel his heart pounding in his chest. Musa sprang into action, grabbing a long stick and running towards the lion, shouting loudly. The lion was startled and backed away, but then charged again, aiming for Musa. Ares could only watch as Musa dodged and weaved, using the stick to fend off the lion. The lion was relentless, and Ares could see Musa struggling to keep him at bay. 
Ares knew that he had to do something to help, but was frozen with fear. Suddenly, he remembered the rules Musa had told him before entering the enclosure. He slowly backed away, trying not to attract the lion's attention. Musa continued to fight off the lion, but he was clearly getting tired. The lion was getting more aggressive, and Ares could see the fear in Musa's eyes. Ares knew he had to do something, but didn't know what. Suddenly, he saw the stick Musa was using lying on the ground near him. Without thinking, Ares grabbed the stick and ran toward the lion, shouting loudly. Surprised, the lion turned towards Ares, giving Musa a chance to escape. Ares used the stick to fend off the lion, hitting him on the head and making loud noises. The lion backed away, and Ares used the opportunity to escape the enclosure. Musa followed him, and they closed the gate behind them. Ares was shaking and covered in sweat. He had never been so scared in his life. Musa checked him for injuries and made sure he was okay. They both looked back at the enclosure where the lion was calm and back to his playful self. Musa explained to Ares that sometimes even the most well-trained animals could become unpredictable and it was important to follow the safety rules. Ares thanked Musa for saving his life and promised to never forget the lessons he had learned.